Hello everybody and welcome to the new episode of 2023. Happy New Year! In this episode we're going to show you many resources from industry, different projects and from uh, also an experiment. The theme of today's episode is Integrated STEM Teaching or STEAM, where the A is all other subjects. Okay. To explain more, we have Maria Podlasek Ziegler, who is a policy officer at the European Commission and the General Directorate for Education and Culture. Welcome, Maria. What's your role at the European Commission? First of all, thank you. I'm happy to be here. Yes, I work in the Directorate General for Education and Culture, and more exactly in the school policy unit, and I'm in charge of STEM education. The General Directorate for Education and Culture has been supporting integrated STEM teaching through three initiatives. The Choice Project created teaching materials that in were included in a MOOC, so teachers can work with other teachers on bringing all these subjects together. The first, uh, the, this, uh, this resource is uh, entitled The Starry Night, after the famous painting uh, by Van Gogh, and it combines art, origami and mathematics. By using origami to explain mathematics and bring it to life by linking it to art and creative activity. Students were involved in active learning by uh, creating origami for faults, uh, but not only origami faults, the teachers before explained uh, how the geometry we use usually differs from origami geometry, the difference between Euclidean geometry normally used and origami geometry. Because in the traditional approach to geometry normally, normally taught uh, at schools, we use uh, uh, compass constructions and calculations. Instead, in origami geometry, we use faults. The Choice MOOC, the platform is for free, both for teachers and students. Uh, it can be accessed only by registration with your email. Thank you very much. The MOOC continues to be open and teachers can access all the materials created through the Choice project through this online course. Now, Maria, why is integrated STEM teaching so important? Because it makes learning uh, more meaningful and more fun. Uh, integrated STEM teaching connects not only STEM topic altogether, but also introduces other disciplines such as arts, humanities, social sciences. And in, in this way, it puts STEM in a real life context. And this is very important to make learning more meaningful, more relevant for the students. Uh, such a contextualization of STEM is uh, also very much needed to better understand the real uh, world around. And we have many challenges facing Europe today, like uh, digital and green transformation inequalities. Uh, and all this requires STEM-driven solutions. So these topics are really high on the EU agenda. Uh, integrated STEM teaching requires different methods of uh, teaching, and this uh, makes uh, learning more interactive, more collaborative. And uh, of course, this makes at the same time the learning experience more fun, more attractive, more appealing to students. Integrated STEM teaching helps at the same time to address the main challenges we face in STEM education in Europe. And this is firstly, underachievement in basic skills including mathematics and science. One in five 15 year olds is concerned by this problem. And we have observed that this, this trend is deteriorating over the period 2009-2018. On the other hand, there is the gender gap in STEM education. It means the performance uh, among girls and boys is uh, at the same level more or less, but when it comes to choosing 
STEM studies or STEM careers, much less girls embark on this uh, path. And so uh, uh, integrated STEM education is more likely to attract and inspire more students to uh, choose these uh, STEM disciplines. It's important, especially to connect with uh, real life and the world around us. And for that, of course, industry plays a very important role. In fact, the STEMIT project handled the contextualization of STEM teaching as one of the aspects of integrated STEM teaching. One of the resources sets STEAM at apart are the guidelines to overcome barriers to integration. Indeed, teachers have told us that it's difficult to navigate the curriculum and to integrate all the STEM subjects in the activity, and that it can be challenging to coordinate working with their colleagues to gain support of their school administration or to find time to STEM integration with their school schedule. We have therefore created a set of guidelines that help teachers to organize themselves and work with colleagues, adapt integrated STEM teaching to work within the national curriculum and to overcome technological challenges. Another key resource for teachers is the handbook for career advisors. It's created by the Career Advisors Network. It helps teachers to understand how to best promote STEM careers with their students to organize activities with professionals in class, and it gives tips and tricks about networking with STEM professionals, and it's full practice of advice on how to inspire students about a career in STEM. The guidelines and framework of STEMIT are available to any teachers or policymakers interested in seeing how they could use integrated STEM teaching in their educational systems. Now, Maria, what is the European Commission's uh, strategy to support integrated STEM teaching? I would like to stress, first of all, that uh, member states are in charge of the content of teaching in their countries and how they organize the teaching and uh, uh, systems, uh, the education and training system in their countries. The EU plays only a supporting role. So we support the member states with policy guidance, with uh, um, mutual learning opportunities with funding. We have a number of policy initiatives which promote transdisciplinary teaching and learning, including in STEM, edu STEM education, and this includes competence-based learning or uh, blended learning. In addition, we promote the so-called uh, whole school approach. It opens up schools uh, to the wider local community and involves uh, parents, NGOs, businesses and non-formal learning providers. This makes STEM learning much more meaningful and relevant. Uh, we have uh, the flagship program in education called Erasmus Plus and there is uh, the opportunity for teachers, students and other stakeholders to come together and to um, implement a transnational project. We can say it is like an innovation laboratory. And we have hundreds of uh, projects which promote this uh, integrated teaching in STEM education. In addition, we put emphasis on teacher uh, education. And there is a new initiative under Erasmus Plus uh, program called Erasmus Teacher Academy. And there is the, the opportunity of mutual learning for teachers and teacher educators, uh, and this uh, through various forms, such as uh, joint community of practices, uh, programs, and other forms of cooperation. The community aspect is very important, that also having teachers train other teachers. As that, that's one of the things that the STEM on Edu has done, and that's the third of the projects that was financed by the Education and Culture General Directorate of the European Commission. The massive open online course, Design, Orchestration and Implementation of STEAM Education is addressed to all individuals who are interested in applying or finding out about STEAM Education for example, in-service or pre-service educators, 
managers or directors at all levels of formal and non-formal education. It lasts six weeks, it contains 18 modules and 50 learning units, which map to the STEAM educators' competencies listed in the framework. The MOOC platform allows participants to access more than 120 presentations, videos and documents, while they can discuss with tutors and peers in the forums and implement collaborative activities. You can find out more about the STEAM on Edu project by visiting its website. You can still join the community of STEAM educators, the platform is open and those interested can register via the project website and access all its content and more. Now make sure to have a look at the STEM on Edu Teachers Competence Framework. Now thank you very much Maria for joining us today and to talk about the projects that the General Director for Education and Culture has supported on integrated STEM teaching. Thank you very much. Now even though the work from these three projects is over, if the work continues with three new initiatives from the General Directorate for Research and Innovation. The three projects are going to work on a STEM education roadmap. The CIR is going to do it by guiding policymakers, schools, leaders, industry partners in creating the perfect conditions for integrated STEM teaching. We also have Road Steamer that wants to encourage more students to go into STEM careers by bringing the aesthetics and the arts to, and the creative thinking through an open schooling methodology. And we have also SENSE, which aims to increase the public's interest in science by emerging arts and aesthetics with STEM education. We'll be letting you know more about the three projects throughout the year. Another great source of teaching materials is industry. Let's hear from Ivana Kovac and the STEM Alliance. Hello, Agueda. Uh, today I have two guests. Uh, we have from Intel, Mrs. White, Director of U.S. Education Sales Strategy and Strategic Programs, and Ms. Hoffman, a teacher from Germany. Snow, we know about uh, Intel's resources and how you support STEM teachers. Can you tell us why is this so important uh, for Intel and why did you create these resources? Here at Intel, we are seeing the workplace continue to evolve and adapt. And so, Skills like critical thinking, problem solving, uh, creativity, innovation, extremely important that we're making sure students are prepared for that. But other skill sets that we're seeing in what we call the fourth generation, uh, fourth revolution, are also important. And those skill sets are like drones, AI, simulation, modeling, Internet of Things. And so we created skills for innovation as a way to address this, this challenge of preparing our students. And the nice thing about it is that we don't charge at all. Uh, for this program to be used in schools. I'm sure that Intel Skills for Innovation Starter Pack is something that will be interesting to many of our teachers. Can you maybe give us the overview? Absolutely. So Intel Skills for Innovation has three main components. The first one is uh, a learning management system uh, so that administrators can see what what starter pack lessons are being used. There's professional development available for teachers so they can go through on their own the courses and increase their own skill set in technology in the classroom. But one of the exciting pieces are the starter packs. And that is giving real world experience that teachers are able to use, have authentic learning available using AI for a second grader or using simulation and modeling for a third grader or even high school. And so it is something that is prepackaged for them so they can use it as is, but the goal is to give them experience so that they can start integrating it into the lessons they're already teaching. And I'm excited to introduce Sarah, who has been implementing Skills for Innovation with her students. And Sarah, could you tell us a little bit about how you've been using Skills for Innovation and, and some of the experiences you've witnessed? Of course, I was able to use the starter pack green screen. And first of all, I would like to say it was not only for my students a pleasure, it was only for me a really cool experience. First of all, we talked about our goal and um, that's, uh, after that, the students founded some groups to share some ideas and create their part of our personal school news. So after these episodes of planning, the big day came and we started to record our news for the school. So I was really happy to see all of my students included and in working together and also the shy uh, kids um, were included and got some camera experience uh, lesson from my Instagram girls. I call them like that because they are taking like 100 stories on Instagram and they know how to show up in front of the camera. 
So I was uh, at the end really happy and all of my students were happy uh, that everyone is involved and had a lot of fun. And um, I think they learned about writing a script, teamwork, presenting results, um, using the digital equipment. And I was really happy that they are speaking full German sentences because they want a professional appearance in front of the camera. So this is a big win for me and for my students too. And are there uh, any recommendations that you would provide if another teacher was going to implement Skills for Innovation? Yes, um, don't be afraid to try, uh, try some new ways of teaching. The students help you if you are not sure how to use the single parts of the equipment. It's uh, easy at all, but your students can help you. They are the native um, people who are using um, cameras and something like that. So um, the um, starter pack is uh, really comfortable for all of the students. And um, also uh, another tip from my side is uh, use the starter pack also in difficult groups because um, it's really cool to see all people working and um, all of the students are included. Um, you will really love um, that you can see uh, that you can catch up all of the students. Um, yeah, and I think uh, one important thing too is to let things flow. The kids will find some really cool ideas. You don't have to do um, everything in um at the beginning so they will find some new ideas so um yeah that's important too and uh, the last one is um show your results with your class because it's a really um, good motivation for other students to try some new things and also for your colleagues to try the new uh, experience packages no sarah thank you very much for being with us today and thanks a lot for sharing all the tips and all the good recommendations for your colleagues and our teachers Thanks a lot. Back to you, Agada. Thank you, Ivana, Snow and Sarah. Now, for anybody interested in using the Skills for Innovation resources, there will be a webinar on this very topic on the 8th of February. Now, we're moving on to the experiment section and we have Michael back on how to incorporate art in STEM teaching. Michael, how are you doing today? Well, I'm great. It's great to be back on Scientix TV. Thanks for having me again. So show us, what are you doing today? Excellent. So I'm going to show uh, colored fluorescence. So to show what materials I have here, I have a bunch of drawings that have been made with these simple fluorescent markers. And I'm going to be using a light that can change color. So you may recognize this one from last time when I was showing some of Jose Benito's experiments from the Scientix conference. And I'm just gonna turn off the background lights and we're gonna look at these drawings first under red light. And we'll notice a number of the colors are gone from these pictures. And that's because fluorescent highlighters fluoresce. And as we look at other colors, we can kind of see what that means. And fluorescence is the re-emission of light at a lower energy than the incident light. So if we look at under red light, we see none of the colors are fluorescing. We see some of the darker colors like blue have a pigment, which is absorbing the red light. And that's because blue has a higher energy than red. So blue can only absorb the red light, but it can't fluoresce. If we contrast and we go all the way over to blue light, we can see all of the colors that I've used are fluorescing here because blue is the most energetic color. So it has enough energy for orange to fluoresce, for yellow to fluoresce. The green is fluorescing as well, but it's actually got the same phosphor as the yellow. So they appear the same under the blue highlighter. The green can get some of the colors to fluoresce, mainly the orange, and the pink where we can see it's actually an orange phosphor fluorescing. And then if we go back to white, we can see all of the colors together again. So you can see these various pieces of artwork I've picked up on my travels while showing this experiment in a number of different places. This flower was made for me in Mexico by a student there. I think this rainbow might have been in Slovakia. Um, but we see all of this beautiful artwork that students have made uh, while seeing this experiment. That's very interesting. And if anybody else wants to know more about the experience that Michael uh, carries out, don't miss, don't, uh, you shouldn't miss the scientist webinar taking place on the 15th of February, Experiments World Tour. 
Thank you very much, Michael, and see you next time. Thank you. Michael's webinar is part of the 2023 STEM Discovery Campaign, which is starting on the 1st of February and will run until the end of April. The theme is STEM identities, and we invite anybody working on STEM education, teacher organizations, projects, to share their actions to promote STEM in the STEM Discovery Campaign map. We will be selecting some of the activities submitted during February in our next Scientix episode. If your activity is selected, we'll be sending you also an Infinity Notebook. Who else is getting an Infinity Notebook? Two commenters from the last Scientix TV episode. Thank you for all your comments through the social media channels and uh, through our Scientix TV episodes. Now, we also have all the Scientix TV episodes in one place now, which is on the Scientix portal, so check them out. And make sure to tune in for more resources and activities that you can use in your class with your students. Thank you, and see you next time.